This video is about why we have partial discharges. We have to consider a couple of things in order to explain why we have partial discharges, but one of the most important things is we need an electric field. The electric field needs to be high enough, elevated enough, in order to have partial discharges, otherwise it's not possible. So this video is part one and we're going to discuss a little bit how an elevated electric field could look like and why we would have it. Behind me you see two electrodes and I would like to talk about the electric field between them. In order to do that, we have two possibilities to visualize that. One of them would be electric field lines, the other one would be equipotential lines. There are quite a lot of people who use electric field lines in order to describe and or visualize electric fields. There are a lot of people who use equipotential lines and there's a quite a number of people who can use both. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them. I'm, I'm more the fan of electric field lines. It comes more natural to me, it's easier for me to understand. So I hope you can uh, Forgive me in this case that I'm using mainly electric field lines in order to describe that. So, between these two electrodes, we're going to have a homogeneous field. Homogeneous means the electric field strength is the same on all points. So, in order to visualize that, I'm going to draw the electric field lines the best I can. So, the idea was that these electric field lines are parallel and have the same distance to each other. Obviously, I became an engineer and not a really good painter. So, now we got this. There's another possibility to visualize that and this would be a diagram like that. So, this diagram, one of the axes would be the electric field strength. And the electric field strength is usually measured in kV per meter or per centimeter or per millimeter. Um, I'm just going to use um, kV per millimeter. To be honest, it doesn't really matter here. Um, furthermore, this would be distance. And obviously, we have a zero here. This is going to be a linear uh, representation. So, how to represent the electric field and if these electric field lines would be really parallel to each other and have the same distance, it would be quite easy to say we would have something like that. Sorry, once again, this line is not perfect. Uh, there's one thing that is important. Obviously, the electric field lines stop here. We don't have an electric field over here. So this is, this represent, represents our homogeneous electrical field. So not only am I not really good in equipotential lines, I'm also not really good in math. That is the reason I don't like formulas so much. They don't tell me so much. However, there's one formula that makes a lot of sense to be used here. So let me use that. So voltage is the integral of the electric field over distance. And uh, what would be our boundaries? Well, it would be zero. And um, let's call this, I don't know, S1. It doesn't really matter so much. But if we would take the integral of the electric field from here to here, meaning we would describe the area below the curve, or in this case, the area below this line, we would get a result and that would be our voltage. Uh, for the sake of the argument or for oversimplifying what we're doing here right now, let's use a number. Um, let's, let's define how much volt this is. We pick an arbitrary number. I could use 17 or 12 or whatever. I'm just going to use 10. It doesn't really matter. It could be 100, but we're going to use 10. So, my voltage is 10 kV because I just solved this equation and the error below the curve equals 10 kV. So, now let's imagine we are not changing anything except for the geomet geometrical structure of this electrode. Let me just do this. So, this shall be a sharp edge, like we have seen for our corona discharges, where we have one plate and one sharp edge of one pointy thing. So, how would the electric field lines 
in a case like this look like? It is not the best drawing, but I hope you can understand what I mean. The electric field lines focus in here. They're going to have a focal point over here. They're going to meet here. Over here, their distance is a little bit bigger or a little bit higher between them. Um, over here, we still have a more or less homogeneous field, but over here it is not. So, if I'm using this over here, what do I get? Well, before we do that, I forgot something. Um, let's go back to our homogeneous field and let's talk about the following thing. Imagine the designer of the high voltage device was told, okay, please create the high voltage device and you have to have a certain safety margin that you're not having partial discharges. So depending on the insulation system you're using, you need to make sure that you don't have partial, dis partial discharges. Insulation system meaning if you have air, obviously you need other distances than if you need a solid or a liquid insulation system. So here would be air and the person who's making that or doing that, they just, their job is, okay, you have a, soft, soft, a certain safety margin. Very often the safety margin is seven, so the IEC usually demands many things to be tested at 1.73 of the nominal voltage. So obviously it must be minimum plus 73% because it's 1.73. Um, so most of the designs are two times or three times, four times, five times higher of having, being able to have an, uh, endure an electrical field or an elevation of an electrical field, short term or long term, before having partial discharges. For the sake of the argument and the oversimplification in this video, let's pretend the person who made this had, was told, okay, make it about 40%. So if this would be, this would be this, and then maybe this would be around 40%, that could be. So let's say, this is my electric field and if I am above this line, then it becomes critical and I have, might have partial discharges. So let's call this electric field critical. Well, in that case, I can use the blue line and actually call it electric field homogeneous. So if it's plus 40%, meaning I put 10 kV on my device, all is fine, 11, 12, 13. If I go above 14 kV, I might have partial discharges, or at least the electric field is strong enough to produce partial discharges. So, we leave it like that. Now, let's think about how would the inhomogeneous field, the one which I drew in green, be represented in the diagram below here. And it will probably be something like this. Well, that's not really the case. Um, it's probably a little bit more like this. Because the idea is that um, the point where these intersect um, must be something like that. So, once again, I'm really bad in drawing. But what I'm trying to bring across here is that um, if I'm using this formula now again, and I'm taking the area below the curve and I have done a minimum, a minimum a decent job then this area here would equal this area here. Meaning if I'm using that formula and I'm doing the integral in order to determine the area below the, cur uh, the green curve, I would end up with the same value as for the homogeneous field. So this would be 10 kV as well. So what just happened? We didn't change anything. We didn't change the distance. We didn't change the pressure. We didn't change the insulation material. We didn't change anything, except that we changed the geometry of this electrode because the green one now is the one um, that is on this side and here we have the black one. So this means here, this area is 
above the electric field critical. So, if I'm drawing this, and I'm going up here, this would be the area more or less where the electric field, right, this, this line, this would be the area where the electric field is above critical, meaning in this area we could have partial discharges. And this is where they more or less stay. Yes, they can get longer, but let's just say this is the area we really have to worry about concerning partial discharges right in front of the needle tip. So, that's our first attempt in order to explain why we could have an elevated electric field. Now you're probably saying, well, it's very unlikely that somebody just changes the electrode in one of our, my high voltage devices. But there could be something else happening. Um, let's ignore the green lines for now and let's go back for the blue lines and for the homogeneous field. And now let's talk about that we have um, a particle, an object in our insulation system that shouldn't be there. I give an example. Example, you have an oil filled transformer and um, the insulation in oil, trans oil filled transformers is usually paper. And if an, in, in, a, in a transformer, there's always some kind of water. And this water usually stays inside the paper. Now imagine this piece of paper, which is soaked with water, actually goes through the transformer and gets, gets into an electric field. And now let's imagine this is, this is my piece of paper. You could use something else. You could say, okay, this is a human hair in a solid insulation system that shouldn't be there because there were some issues uh, during the production process. Um, it could be all kinds of different things. But let's imagine this is a conductor. Maybe not the best conductor, but it is a conductor. So, what kind of electric field do we get? Well, um, obviously we are getting an electric field line here, and we're getting one here, and then probably you're getting something like this, and like this, and like this, and like this. Ah, the outer one I'm not so good in. Probably the outer one will be something like this. Okay, I'm not so good in drawing, but I think you understand what I mean. What I'm trying to say is um, we are going to have a concentration of some of the electric field lines on this one, uh, here and on here, and the outer electric field changes as well. Maybe similar to this. Once again, it's an oversimplification. How does it look here? Well, let me try to visualize that. That will be probably something like that. Once again, not really good. So now the question is, how good of a conductor is that? If this would be like a perfect conductor, maybe the electric field lines over here, or the electric field strengths would be like that. Or if you zoom out a little bit and you say, no, no, there's still a big part of the electric field, maybe it's like this. If you want to, you can even assume that the electric field is like this, but it doesn't matter so much. The thing that matters here is that we have an area which is above our electric field lines critical. So once again, since the way I drew it, there are areas in our diagram which are above, electric, uh, above, above the critical electric field strength or the electric field, we can have partial discharges now. So where would we get them? Well, obviously somewhere around here and around here, right? I would need to draw a dotted line and that might end up here and my, my here. And yes, depending on this, maybe there might be even more areas, but um, once again, it's an oversimplification. Okay, with this I would like to end the first part of this video and in the next one we're going to talk about the electric field lines in a void. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.